Hey yo, what's good reader fam? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm bringing you a recommendations video and today I'm going to be recommending you some young adult historical fiction books. Today's video is sponsored by HarperCollins and is inspired by the recent release of Wapa! Romanov by Nadine Brandis. Romanov is an Anastasia retelling and we follow our main character Anastasia. As if you couldn't have guessed that. In this book she goes by Nastya. Nastya has been given this mission to carry out on her way to exile in Siberia and that is to smuggle an ancient spell in her suitcase, which I'm pretty sure that if it's found out that she's smuggling this ancient spell, she's gonna be in big trouble. Ch-ch-ch-trouble. Trouble. True blade. Double, double toil and trouble. You know? Trouble. But the thing is, doing this might be the only thing to save her family. But that's not the only obstacle Miss Anastasia is facing. Nope, nope, nope. Can't make it too easy for her. Gotta keep putting up obstacles. Can't make it too easy for Anastasia. Anyway, this new obstacle is the fact that the leader of the Bolshevik army is after her. And he's got a thing for hunting down Romanov. So our main girl is left with two options. She can one, unleash the spell that she's smuggling, which I imagine is not the best idea. But I mean, go off. Do what you gotta do, Anastasia. I'm not gonna stop you. Or team up with Zash, who is a Bolshevik soldier. Which choice will she pick? Gotta read to find out, suckas. Just like me. I don't even know what she chooses. But I imagine whatever she does choose ends up throwing her into some more chaos. I'm excited about this book for several reasons, so let me break it down for you. First up, I love this mixture of fantasy and historical fiction. These are two book ingredients that I love coming together. They're just meant to be together. They should always be in love and nobody should mess with that relationship. Give me that historical background, give me some magic, and cook up a freaking delicious book. Next up is the fact that it's an Anastasia retelling. I love the story of Anastasia. I've always found it really fascinating and mysterious, so when I heard that this was an Anastasia retelling, you can bet I was like, say no more. You're coming with me. You're joining my book family. Lastly, it's just the fact that it is historical fiction because I've been wanting to get more into this genre. It's one that I've been meaning to get more into for a while. I just haven't been making it a priority. I feel like for me, I always prioritize fantasy and contemporary stories. I have a really hard time of pushing myself outside of those genres. So because this one is historical fiction, but it also matches it with fantasy, I thought it might be a good one to kind of like get me into the genre more, kind of get me rolling back into the historical fiction genre. Will it work? I sure hope so. So today, inspired by this book, Romanov, I have rounded up some of my favorite historical fiction books. I'll be honest, these are books that I've talked about a lot on my channel, but I don't have like a central video on my channel where I talk about these books and I wanted to have that live on my channel. So this video is where some of my favorite historical fiction books will live. That way if somebody asks me, yo, can I get some historical fiction recs? I can be like, here's a video link. And hopefully in the future I can make another historical fiction recommendations video after I've read more books in this genre. Before I get into this, I do want to point out the fact that while I'm mostly going to be mentioning positive things about these books, I'm also going to be mentioning some negative things about these books. Just because I love these books doesn't mean that they don't have some faults. So without further ado, let's get started. First up, I have The Conqueror Saga by Kirsten White, which consists of And I Darken, Now I Rise, and Bright We Burn. This is a Vlad the Impaler retelling where instead of Vlad's a man, he's a woman. I went into this trilogy knowing the bare minimum, next to nothing, a whole lot of nothing about Mr. Vlad the Impaler. And while I wouldn't say you should read this book to get educated on Vlad the Impaler, it does fill up your noggin with some knowledge. If you don't know anything about Vlad the Impaler, the best way that I can describe him is by using the word brutal. And that character trait shines through with our main character, Lada, in this trilogy. While her cutthroatness doesn't necessarily shine through in the first book, you can guarantee that it's gonna pop up in the other two books. The rage inside of her breaks through the words and reveals itself. And in the first book, you can still feel that she's got some kind of edge to her. In the first book, we follow Lada and her brother who have been swept away from their home and have been dropped off in the Ottoman Empire, completely abandoned by their daddy. -o. Lada is prepared to one day fully return to her homeland. No matter how challenging that might be, she's up for the challenge. She's determined to get her revenge. I had a weird relationship with Kirsten White's books before picking up these books. I wasn't a fan, did not stand, and And I Darken was gonna be the last straw. If I didn't end up liking it, I was full on prepared to break up with Kirsten White's books. But to my surprise, I devoured it and loved it. And now I'm more than open to reading more books by Kirsten White. Which is why you can't just write off authors, you gotta give them a second chance. Because they can grow and get better. We love character development. Reasons I love it. Number one, characters. This trilogy is an excellent look at character exploration. We see growth with the characters. We see how they deal with challenges they're given. And we see the depths of who they are as people. There's just so much to love about the characters. At the same time though, our cast of characters isn't one where you're gonna love each and every character individually, but you will come to an understanding for who they are and the choices they make. Number two, dynamics. There are so many different dynamics throughout this trilogy and they're all complex. Complexity 
scene, from the sibling dynamic, to the romance dynamic, to even just the dynamic between the friends. Dynamics for you, dynamics for me, dynamics for everybody. Each relationship adds so much to the story, adds a bit of juice into an already juicy story. Next is the detailed world. This is a setting that's so easy to picture because the author did her job in making sure that the world was incredibly detailed. Detailed enough to picture every little thing that pops up in the story. She does it in a way too where it's not overly detailed. You're not thinking to yourself as you read the details, we get it. When you're reading the descriptions, it's more like, we get it and we love it. Which it very easily could have gone into a too much direction. But it didn't. Cheers to that. You know what? Book cheers to that. And the last thing that I'm going to mention that I love is the timeline. In the first book, you follow them from being little babies to growing up to young adults. And I loved that aspect of the story, getting to see them grow up into who they are. You see those really important development years. You see everything that went into them becoming who they are. And I feel like it's what really makes you care about the characters in this story because it feels like you've seen them grow up. It's just super special, okay? Reasons you might not like it. First up, the slow pacing. This is not the most fast paced book in the world. It does have some fast moments, but for the most part, it takes its sweet time in moving the story forward. And lastly, the love triangle. There is a bit of a love triangle, so if you're not down for that, you're tired of it, you don't want any more of it, you might not like that aspect of the trilogy. Next up, I have here The Book Thief, which is one of my all-time favorite books. This book takes place in 1939 in Nazi Germany, and we have the narration of death, which if the setting alone was not already creepy and eerie, bring in the death narration, and it makes everything even more eerie. We see the story of Liesl unfold. She's currently living with a foster family. She's become obsessed and fascinated with words. Relatable. I feel you on the obsession with words, Liesl. I say that as if she's watching this video, but news alert, she's a fictional character. Ah. Liesl ends up taking on book thievery, hence the title of this book, The Book Thief. Nah, 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 nah. Liesl's life becomes full of danger the moment that her foster family opens up their doors to hide a Jewish man. This was one of the first books I read when I was getting into the historical fiction genre, and it's honestly the one that's made me want to get deeper into this genre. It's not a book that's going to be for everyone. I get that. This book has many mixed reviews, but for me, it came into my life and embedded itself there. It now lives in my life. It decided that it was going to make a home for itself on my favorite books list and that it did. Reasons I love it. Number one, the eerie feel to it. This book takes place in a devastating time in history, and I genuinely feel like Marcus Zusak was able to create this incredibly well-crafted snapshot of what it was like to live during this time. It's a book where it's really not hard to fully immerse yourself into the world, into the setting. You feel the sadness in the air, you feel the fear of it all, and you just feel a lot of feelings. So many feelings! Next is the unique perspective of the narrator. In this book, we see through the eyes of death, and as I've talked a lot about this on my channel, I love books where death and grief are a big theme in the story, and this was one of the first books where I realized I love seeing those themes being explored. As if this book didn't already have an eerie feeling to it, throw in the perspective of death, and it pushes the story to next level dark. Next up, the writing style. I love the writing style so much! It has this really unique quality to it. It's so unique! Parts of it felt fantastical and parts of it felt incredibly real. Not just real, incredibly real. The author was also able to strike so many different emotions throughout the writing. Strike that emotion! Reasons you might not like it. Number one, the characters. While I really enjoyed the characters from the book, I can't say that they're the most lovable characters. They're not necessarily characters that you'll obsess over. Number two, the pacing. The pacing of this story is very slow. Things do pick up from time to time, but for the most part it moves at a sluggish pace. And lastly, it's hard to get into. Initially this book does take some time to get used to just because of the writing style and the perspective you're seeing through. It does take some time to fully see yourself into the story. Next up here I've got Salt to the Sea by Ruta Sepetis. This story takes place in 1945 and it's the story of the Wilhelm Gustloff. And honestly telling you about this event in history kind of spoils the story. So like should I say what it's about? I don't know. I don't want to spoil it if you don't know how it all goes down. I'll just give you a few details but it won't spoil what happens. The story takes place as World War II is coming to a close and the Wilhelm Gustloff was a ship that promised safety for refugees. In this book we follow four different perspectives and they each bring in a different angle on the story. And that's all I can tell you because spoilers! This is a book where I went in with no expectations and then I came out of it being like feelings, feelings, everywhere there are feelings. All I see are feelings. It's excellent in every sense of the word. And I'm super excited because Ruta has a new book coming out this fall called The Fountains of Silence. And you can bet it's one of my most anticipated releases of the year. Even though I should really read her other books as well. Because if this one wowed me with a capital W to really emphasize the wow factor, then I'm sure I'm gonna like her other 
books. I need to have like a Ruta Sepetis marathon or something. Reasons I love it. The first thing I liked about it was getting informed, which I know sounds kind of silly, but it did really inform me on an event that I had no idea about. I had honestly never heard of the Wilhelm Gustloff until this book. And after reading this, I remember distinctly being like, I need to know more. So I hit up my best friend Google and had them help me find out more. And I honestly feel like that's a sign of a historical fiction book doing a good job. When it's piqued your interest to go beyond reading the book and getting informed through the book and going further to do research on your own to know more about the event that happened in the book. The next thing that I loved was the distinct character voices. The characters really brought this story to life with their different backgrounds and their different personalities. They each had very distinct voices and nobody felt similar at all. And these characters are ones that will just like wrap themselves around you and you'll carry them with you forever. Not in the physical sense, thankfully, because that'd be heavy having to carry around these people with you everywhere. I'm not sure where I'm going with this, but basically the characters will stick with you. There are characters that you'll love and there's a specific character that you'll hate. Next up is the realistic writing style. Something that Ruta Sepetis really succeeds at is making her book feel super real, which I know that obviously it's based off a real event, so she's got that to help her out. But not all historical fiction books really achieve that real feeling. To me, that tone really comes through with how fleshed out the setting is. Can you tell that the author did their research? Can you tell that the book takes place in the 1940s? This book has a major yes to both of those questions. Reasons you might not like it. So I know that I said at the beginning of this video that I was going to say negative things about each book, but I honestly can't pinpoint any negatives about this book. I love everything about it. I'm sure there are some negative things about it, but I just can't think of anything. I'm like drawing a blank, honestly. Lastly, I have here the Passenger Duology. A -a 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 -a. I don't even know if this is really considered historical fiction, but I'm going to force it into the genre. Who even decides this stuff anyway? Probably the publisher. Makes sense. Well, I'm taking over the role. It's historical fiction. Fight me. It does go through several time periods in history, so I'm counting it, yo. This book follows our main character, Etta, who is one day performing in a violin concert. Violin in it up. And the next thing she knows, she's thrust back in time, only to find out that her family's been keeping quite a few secrets. And we've got that whole typical, wow, my mom didn't tell me anything about the fact that she's a time traveler. Thanks, mom. Etta teams up with Nicholas, whom she meets on a ship, and together they travel through time to try and find this object that's like super dangerous. And they also are trying to unravel Etta's family's secrets as well. But there's also a really important object that they're after. They gotta get it before it gets in the wrong hands. While these are probably the least historical fiction books I'm including on this list, I'm still including them. Reasons I love it. Number one, how adventurous it is. This is one of those books that screams adventure. ADVENTURE! Literally! If you want a wild ride through time with lots of madness and mystery, this is the book for you. Passengers got you covered. Next up is all the places and time periods that you explore throughout this book. You get to go to so many places and different time periods in this book, and that's something that was so fun to experience. I mean, it does make you wish that you were a time traveler and that you got the chance to go to all these cool historical places, and it kind of sucks when you remember that you'll never get the chance to time travel and you can only read about all these cool things. But it's fine. That's something that just really really shines through with this book. Like you're not just going to one place and learning about one thing in history. You're going from here to there to over there and there and learning about so many different things. Reasons you might not like it. Number one, it's a bit insta-lovey. I will admit that the characters start to fall for each other pretty quickly and that could potentially be bothersome, but if you don't mind a bit of insta-love or you can overlook it, it won't be too bad. Lastly, the over-detailed writing style. This is an issue that I often run into with Alex's books. I do enjoy her writing style, but I feel like sometimes the way that she describes things, she just goes too far with it. The best way that I can describe it is that it's very wordy. I feel like she could spend two paragraphs describing a white wall. Props to her for being able to do that, but it's a white wall. All you gotta do is say it's a white wall and that's enough for me. So if you like really detailed writing, then you'll love that aspect. But for me, sometimes it slowed down the flow of the story and it also just kind of pulled me out of the story. So those are all the historical fiction book recommendations I have for you guys today. You guys should let me know down below in the comments your recommendations, because like I said, I want to break deeper into this genre and I need your help to do that. So recommend me some books down below in the description. And by description, I mean in the comments. I love misspeaking. But also let me know down below in the comments if you have read any of the books that I mentioned in today's video and your thoughts on them. Again, thank you to HarperCollins for sponsoring this video. If Romanov by Nadine Brandes sounds interesting to you, definitely go and check it out. It's in stores now. If you like this video, be sure to go and hit that like button. If you want to see more bookish content from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope your day is bright and that tomorrow is brighter. Keep reading what your heart desires and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye! -o.